Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to, to start up R, and, uh, and I'll give you an introduction to the, the R terminal, the R application, and uh, some of the simple uh, data types and uh, simple operations in R. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've installed it already, and uh, this is, uh, I have a Mac here, so things will be slightly different on a PC. Um, but we can find the R, the R application in the Applications folder. If we scroll down, it should have been installed in here. And we can start the application. And here you see the R console. Let's just close this. Uh, here's the R console, which is um, where we do all our operations in R. So we have various menus at the top up here plus you also have these menus here and some of them we will go through in due course okay so you know here's the R prompt down here uh, let's just start doing some commands so we can do simple arithmetic for example let's do 2 times 2 And this uh, prints the answer for. So you can see actually, first of all, uh, we use this assignment operator instead of uh, an equals, which we, we would use in, in MATLAB, for example. And uh, we can do various operations or, um, you know, simple calculations uh, and use brackets. A plus B times 3, etc. And um, this is fairly simple basic use. So, so there are three basic data types in R. And we have the numerical type, so that's what we defined previously. We can use this class function within R to tell us what a variable type is. So the first type is numeric. Okay, the next type of data we have is a string. So let's call it S, and we'll do the familiar "Hello World." Okay, and again we can use the class function to find out information on S. So that's a character, character. Right? For storing uh, strings, strings uh, and characters. The final data type that we won't uh, in, we won't really use much in this particular tutorial is the logic data type, which can be true or false. Logical. So now we go class again, Oops. and you see it's logical, and it. Other version, other, the other value that, that it can be is false again, logical. So then the 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 three basic types um, in R. Now, uh, one of the very useful features of R is that um, we don't really deal with single uh, values, or we, we tend not to deal with single values. We use vectors and all most operations involve vectors and actually you can see up here well let me do it again a times b you can see this one here and that that signal signal signals that this return value is actually a vector and the first value is four okay now we can create vectors using the C operation. So we could create a vector and assign it to a variable V. Now V is a vector of type numeric. So if we look at the class of V again, it will say numeric. Now we can do operations on vectors just as we did with 
with um, with just single values. So let's do v times two, and it will perform that multiplication on every element of the vector. And this this can be very useful. And let's define another vector. Um, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. So we have two vectors now, u and v, and we can perform addition with those two vectors. And we, this performs a standard vector addition. Now, if we want to access one of the very uh, one of the elements in the vector, we use square brackets, as this would indicate. So u one is 6, u5 is 10. Uh, what happens if we try and access a value off the end of the vector? So you can see u is 5 long. Have a look. It gives us a NA, which stands for missing data. So because we haven't filled that value, um, that's missing. We can, however, fill the value directly by going, for example, 11. Now when I print out u, we've added that extra element on the end of the vector. Okay, so how do we find out the, the length of a vector? Well, we can use the inbuilt r function length. And that's now 6, 6 long. Um, v was 5 long. What happens if we try and add u and v now? We get an error message because the two vectors aren't of the same size and, and uh, the, the operation is illegal.